Delighted to join you in Geneva on this, the 65th anniversary of the IOM. It's an occasion for both celebration and reflection. When the IOM was uh, established in 1951, it was in the aftermath of the Second World War, a time of upheaval and mass displacement of people. Much has changed for the better over uh, intervening decades, yet uh, here we find ourselves now at a time when we are experiencing the largest humanitarian and refugee crisis since that war. In a world of seven to nine billion people, demographic pressures mean that we are now challenged to bring order to the process so that migration takes place in a way that upholds dignity, well-being and the fundamental human rights of human beings and of migrants. This challenge requires all of us to work collaboratively and compassionately. It is one that requires us to apply the golden rule, to treat others as we would wish to be treated ourselves. It is a challenge that IOM has been dedicated to since its inception, with a steadfast dedication to humane and orderly migration benefiting all. I'm glad to know that throughout all this, the United Nations and IOM have enjoyed a close working relationship. I was honored in September to preside over the historic UN summit on large movements of refugees and migrants, where the relationship was further strengthened through the signing of the UN-IOM agreement, which formally established IOM as a related organization of the United Nations. And now we must move to implement the commitments we made under the New York Declaration. We are putting our shoulders to the wheel for an ambitious and comprehensive of global compact on migration in 2018. But most critically of all, we must achieve the 17 sustainable development goals of the 2030 agenda if we are to provide humanity as a whole with a sustainable future. Altruism, humankind's unique and highest quality, beckons us to engage with the challenges facing migrants and refugees. His Holiness, Pope Francis, has called upon us all to overcome the globalization of indifference, a message all the more compelling in this year of mercy. Excellencies, here at the International Organization for Migration, we have a huge force of people doing good works to meet those high challenges. May your hands be strengthened in your work and may the combination of your minds and hearts prevail over indifference. I thank you. Uh, you know, when you look at a guy like me, uh, I'm a fifth generation Fijian, but I'm obviously a product of migrants from the color of my skin. Uh, it's been a very positive thing for me to be able to represent migrant communities in, in the, the debate that's gone on over the last year or so. On, you know, I feel I've got skin in the game, to put it uh, to excuse the pun. But <laughs> the, uh, I, I do feel we're on the right track. And I, I'm, I'm very confident that come 2018, we'll have a, 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 a compact which recognizes the reality, really, of what we're trying to do here. I mean, obviously, apart from improving conditions for migrants, uh, we're also looking at a global compact, uh, which, if you want to be rough in terminology, is about supply and demand uh, and uh, you know where people can be fitted in. I think that there's, in terms of... Um, the bigger picture, we should also be looking at climate change. Uh, and I've always felt in my work at the United Nations that there are two big things for the 21st century, one being climate change, and then if you look at the impacts of climate change, um, what arises from that is uh, migration. That, that, that's just, it's just logic. You know, you cannot stay in your traditional homeland if it's turned into a desert. Uh, you cannot stay in your your traditional rice delta in Bangladesh or whatever if it's now under a, a meter of water. Likewise for the people of Kiribati or Tuvalu where they've lived for, for thousands of years. They can't stay there if the sea has taken over their country. So they've got to migrate. So uh, these are the, the, the big challenges of the 21st century and I think we're doing absolutely the right thing by having a measured uh, approach to a good global compact on migration to be agreed upon by 2018. Thank you.